Hello and welcome to this segment of Mobile Tech Videos. This is Josh, also known as Connection 2005 on the XTA Developers Forums. Today I'll be walking through how to use Screencast. Screencast is a very useful job application that allows you to control your Android phone from your computer. This is especially handy for people in office environments that don't like to always have to pull out their phone and need to send a simple text message back or just browse their phone for a file without having to look, you know, inconspicuous and, and pick up their phone. Uh, it's also very important for people who have cracked their screen or maybe ruined their digitizer and need to be able to browse their phone uh, to make a backup, to grab a file or to just pull all the data off of it because the phone's worthless. If the phone still works, this probably will work too. So, without further ado, the first thing we need to do is go grab Java. Uh, obviously, we've got the link in the More Info section. Most people will probably have Java. If you don't, just follow the link and you'll get to the, the free Java download site. Download the free Java download uh, and I'll allow you to do that at this time and you'll go ahead and install it and we'll catch up at the end of your install. Okay, once you've installed your Java, it's time to go install Droid Explorer. Keep in mind that this video is uh, is assuming that you have installed the SDK, I mean, uh, I apologize, the, uh, the Samsung drivers for your phone. Uh, those drivers can be found at the link provided. Simply uh, run the setup.exe file inside the driver file pack. Um, most people at this point have installed the drivers for their phone. Uh, if you have, continue to the next step, which is installing Droid Explorer. So follow the link in the More Info section, and you can find the Droid Explorer default page, um, and it'll take you straight to the download section. There's a 64-bit and a 32-bit setup. Um, we prefer to run uh, the non-standalone package. Uh, and go ahead and install either 32-bit or 64-bit depending on the application that you have. Once you've ran through that install, we'll go to the next step. Okay, once you've installed Droid Explorer, go ahead and plug in your phone. Before you plug in, remember that you must be rooted to do this. I have a video on how to root your Samsung Captivate for 2.1 and 2.2 Android in my channel if you'd like to view that. If you are rooted, don't worry. Uh, the second thing is you must also have USB debugging mode enabled. To do that, click the left. Normally, you just enter the settings for your phone. Click Applications, then Development. Then you'll see a box for USB debugging. Check it, say yes, and that's it. So now you can plug in your phone if you verify that those two steps have been performed. So there's our computer recognizing our phone. Now we want to launch Droid Explorer. Okay, before we go any further, we're going to open a command prompt and we're going to do an ADB devices to make sure everything's connected. So change directories to your Android directory for the SDK tools. Run an ADB devices. Press enter. We'll see a list of devices attached. If you see a device, that means you're correctly connected. Once you've done that, we can go to the next step. So I'm going to allow you to catch up at this time and I'll catch up with you guys in just a moment. Okay, once we have verified that our uh, device is attached correctly, we need to run one more line, a couple more lines of code here. Um, what we're going to do here is change the directory permissions for the data Dalvik cache folder. Uh, some users can see the screen once we enter screen cache, but they can't actually do anything with it. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we don't have any problems. So within the same prompt, type in ADB shell, press enter. At this time, power on your phone, make sure the screen is open. Type in SU. You will be uh, prompted for super user permissions if you've never done this with the ADB show. So simply say allow if your phone asks you for super user permissions. Once it does, we can go to the next step, which is changing the permissions to full read write on the data Dalvik 
cache folder. Press enter. It will return with a pound sign. We'll change the directories to the data Dalvik cache. And now we can simply exit twice. You're free to close the command prompt at this time. Now we'll go back into Droid Explorer. For this, you really need to try to, if you can, change the setting on your phone that allows the screen to time out to nothing. If the screen times out, you can't use Screencast to unlock it. Uh, Screencast works as long as the phone isn't locked. So if it keeps falling asleep, just continue to unlock it. So anyways, we got our phone plugged in. We've set our sensitivity for the screen lockout. And now we want to click Tools, Plugins, Screencast. And in just a moment, we'll load our screen. All right, now we've got our screen up. We can even see the live animations trying to keep up with the, uh, the slow refresh rate. That's kind of funny. Um, anyways, from here, we can click Applications. And we can see that we've got into our applications. Hold to swipe. You can do everything. So, I mean, you know, the mouse is your finger in this situation. So we just swipe to the next menu there. Uh, now we can go back home. I mean, you can you can literally do anything. Make titanium backups. You can uh, you can access any files you need to access. Anything. The bottoms at the the the, the buttons at the bottom sometimes don't work for all folks. They work great on the Samsung Captivates. Um, but this is how to view your Android device with a PC and how to control it with a PC to do critical system functions that you couldn't do if the phone was broken or just to send a text back to your friend uh, without having to pick up your phone. So it's a great thing to do. Uh, I highly recommend it. And as always, you know, I wish you guys good luck.